Hey, I'm Dara, I'm 22 and I live in Seattle. And I'm Bria and I'm 23 and I live in Los Angeles. So we often get asked about our lives and careers as engineers, so we just wanted to give some insight into who we are and some frequently asked questions we get about coding and computer science. All right, so let's get into it. The first question is, uh, where did you go to school and what did you study? Um, I went to the University of Texas at Austin and I studied computer science with minors in math and African studies. And I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and I studied computer science. No minors <laughs> in anything. <laughs> um, so Bria, where do you work now and where have you worked? Uh, so I work at Google as a software engineer right now. Um, previously I was at Microsoft. I also interned at Microsoft, and um, while in college, I was also working at a small iOS and Android development studio. Nice. Um, I work at Microsoft as a program manager now, um, and I interned at Microsoft during college, and I also worked at Twitter and Intel. Um, so when did you start coding, and what was your first language? So I started coding when I was in middle school. So I was like 10 or 11, but it was it was like HTML, CSS. So I got into college and I was like, oh, I got this, you know, like computer science, I'm good. Mm -hmm. uh, I took intro to programming. It was in my, it was my first time like writing Java, and it was completely like I don't know if it was a culture shock, but it was definitely a, <laughs> a learning curve. Um, so technically, HTML and CSS were my first languages, but my first like true you know programming language was Java. I started, I didn't know anything about computer science when I started college. I just liked calculus and I liked physics. And then in oh, college, I was, okay. I mean, in high school, I was just like, where do I go from here? Yeah. I want to make money. What do I do with calculus? I started with learning Java through Android. Oh, and so okay. Java was okay. my first language as well. Nice. Making Android apps, yeah. Okay. Um, did you always know you wanted to be an engineer? I guess you kind of answered that. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I did not. <laughs> I didn't either. I thought I was going to go into like international relations or business or something like that. So, um, What was your favorite computer science class? None of them. <laughs> um, I mean, like, they all taught me something for me to keep going, but I really liked not, I really liked going home and doing what I was doing. But if I had yeah. to choose, if I had to choose, it would be my computer science law class because it's crazy how much all of um, how many times people get like really screwed over because legislators just have no clue how to rule on like intellectual property yeah, cases, yeah, yeah. Um, stealing of like identities and mm -hmm. all of that. Like people have no clue. Yeah. yeah. And my favorite computer science class was operating systems. Um, only be like I I hate like you know lower stack anything. <sighs> that was my worst <laughs> class. Oh, no, it was it was my it was my worst class as well in terms of it was by far the hardest class I took in all of undergrad. Like I was putting in like probably like fifty to sixty hours a week just for that class alone. But like it, it taught me how to be an engineer. Like it made me feel like I could actually do this. Um, and like I always say, like computer science or like my college degree didn't teach me how to code necessarily. Like you said, like you have to do a lot of learning like on your own. But it taught me how to think. So yeah, is coding hard? It's just like, it's it's not impossible. It, it requires you to use your brain and to use logic. But for the most part, when you're doing something that you love, it's like, it's more like a love frustration more than like a like, I hate, I mm -hmm. hate this, never doing this again. Yeah. Just let me finish this and then move on with my day. Let me get to something else. Like, sometimes when it's hard is when it's the best. Exactly. It's very fulfilling, like, yeah. when everything finally comes together. Um... What is the biggest struggle you face as a black woman in tech? We get asked this question so often. Yeah. The biggest struggle being a black woman in tech, it's probably, it's not, it's, it's most, most definitely not me. It's how other people, it's how it's other not people. It's not your problem, it's your problem. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. It's like, it's mostly like, People always have expect their expectations are always really low. Their kindness is always non-existent. Um, people always assume things about me yeah. because, like, even not only just being a black woman, but like a black woman that um, 
I guess, takes care of myself. I was physically. gonna say, like, being, like, quote-unquote, like, feminine. Yeah, a feminine yeah. engineer on top. And yeah, yeah. It's hard to... Because people always think, are always assuming I'm gonna be the dumbest person. Yeah. They always assume I'm gonna be the dumbest person in the room, dumbest person in the class, dumbest person on the team. Yes. Um, someone who's always gonna need help. Someone that, like, they don't want to help. Yeah. And that's kind of, like, the hardest part is, um kind of dealing with that and not letting my emotions take hold of it. It's mostly just like I always feel like I have to prove myself every single and day. That, and that was my, gonna be my answer. Yeah. We could basically do a whole video. This could, you know, we like, could do, we might actually do a whole video about being black in tech. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next question. So what are you learning right now? Um, so right now I am learning Android development. So yeah. I already know Java. But um, I've never done Android before, um, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm currently learning. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, right now, I'm like in this transition period. I've been doing iOS for a while. Um, She's a beast at iOS. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I learned when it was Objective C and now yeah. Swift, and I'm, I was very, that's very tough, reluctant yeah. to like go to Swift because I've like written like I do animation too in iOS and it's mm -hmm. all written in Objective C right now. I'm like, uh but all my beautiful code that I wrote already. Yeah. But Swift yeah. is gorgeous. It <sighs> like I really, so... really like Swift. Okay. You don't have that opinion? I I don't have an opinion on it because okay. I really am so like I mean I've never learn learned Objective C though. So I only like my I... intro to iOS was Swift. Yeah. And so like the reason like uh we brought this question up is because like even though like we have bachelor degrees in computer science and even though we work as engineers now like it's never done like you're always supposed to like keep learning and keep growing so mm -hmm. um what do you think is the first step for someone learning how to code um well i think i mean this isn't a requirement but at least have some type of goal in mind like um if you're an yeah. adult, I'm guessing you have at least been exposed to something to make you, like, intrigue you and be like, okay, well, that it seems interesting. Let me want to learn to code. Um, so I wonder what that is. And that yeah. kind of, like, if that's what brought you in, um, finding a path to go down, because sometimes it can be hard if you're just like, I just want to learn computer science. Yeah. Do you want, like, computer science is huge. Yeah. Like, it's all the way from, like, what helps rockets get into the sky to like gaming there's mobile and web application development you know there's operating system development like there's very 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 low level yeah there's stuff. data visualization like there's so many things that you can do with computer science mm -hmm. so it would help like it would really benefit you for your first step to be like what interests me do i like mm -hmm. you know like what part of the so the stack is mm -hmm. like the way i see the stack is like a line mm -hmm. so it's like you know very like low, aka like machine operating system to like uh, you know the high end of the stack, which is like what people see, so the front end. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like what interests you, um, and then I think identify that is definitely the first step. Yeah, because um, I think both of us are very visual, mm -hmm. so that's why like we I are gravitate. we are hybrid engineers. We're very yeah. creative as well. So. Yeah, so like I gravitate to the front end because I like to create vector drawings and then being and icons and stuff. So. I also just like imagining like a user using um, my thing and optimizing for that. Yeah. That's front end. So like at least I want to like at least I know I'm gonna have want to learn something uh, in that realm. And yeah. then there's well definitely languages that you start with there. There's definitely like a bunch of steps you start with there. Otherwise, if that's not really what you want to do, mm -hmm. the other side. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends on your interest. And I guess we kind of answered, like, what is the difference between front end and back end? So, like, Bria said, like, front end has a lot more to do with, like, what the user sees um, in that interaction with the user. And back end is, like, what is happening behind the scenes. So, like, your databases and, like, things like that. Like, on Instagram, like, you're using the app, but, like, where are these images coming from? Yeah. Like, how do they know that by you, that I am following these people? Mm -hmm. How do, how, um, what is this algorithm that's pulling in exactly. my, my explore page? There are so many languages. How do I choose which one to start coding with? Um, I get it. This kind of goes back to like the what was it before? have some type of goal in mind. If you don't, there should probably maybe there's probably some like YouTube videos. There's probably mm -hmm. um, a couple 
um, things you can look up online with like what can you do with computer science and yeah. then just see just like get some type of idea because otherwise you're just going to jump into something and you might not even like it exactly. and it might get steer you away from computer science yeah. um yeah so like what would you say like for, for i mean same i think maybe like if you are a lot of people gravitate to or want to learn to code now because of like mobile development or web development so that's their understanding of mm -hmm. Coding, like we said, it's a lot more than that. You know, there's like a whole spectrum of things you can do. But maybe starting with a non-intimidating language like HTML and CSS, which like deal primarily completely with the front end, um, and because they just have a high reward in terms of like they're pretty simple, um, and like you're able to like see what you're building, so it makes you feel like some sense of like validation. So the next question is, should I go back to school for computer science? So. It's complicated. Um, <laughs> you you don't have you you don't have to. Um, there's a lot of different resources. Um, there's boot camps that you can hit. It's like they have one week boot camps. There's three week ones. Um, there's even like three month ones that I think you have to pay like um, a year's worth of tuition. They, but they, they get they get pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah, they get expensive, but at the same time they'll teach you exactly what you need to know to accomplish that. Like um specifically for, I think General Assembly has a couple too. Mm -hmm. Um but There's Hack Bright Academy for yeah. Women in San Francisco. There's a ton of boot camps. Yeah, so or you can, you know, like teach yourself like we did <laughs> uh, for a lot of like the things that we were trying yeah. to do. But um to if you want to start getting into really complicated things uh, like if you want to work for something like self-driving car, if you want to work, on, if you want to apply to work for a really big company, um, you either have to be super, super, super good at it, or go get some yeah. more education. So just ultimately do what you need to do to get to where you want to go to in terms of like what skills you want to learn and mm -hmm. things like that. So if it requires you going back to school, then go back to school, but you don't have to. Um, so our next question: um, Do you recommend online coding tutorials? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's probably the best way I learned was doing That's it. how I learned as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we both learned iOS the same way using like Stanford's great online yeah, class. Stanford. Stanford. Thank you. Shout out Stanford. to the Stanford team. Yeah. And it's free. <laughs> you know, and there's so many free resources online that you can use to learn. There's Code Academy, Udacity, Treehouse, um, Free Code Camp, and we'll list them all in the description so that you yeah. guys can. So. Yeah, like Coursera, and it's honestly for anything. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there's one for machine learning that ever at Stanford that everyone yeah. says is like awesome. Yes, okay. like everyone's crazy yeah. about it. So there, there are a lot of resources. We highly recommend, um, you know, finding classes to take and like doing that. So yeah, what is the best resource for developers? Stack, Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow. Yeah. yeah. Um, Stack Overflow. Is <laughs> Yeah, um, do you post on it ever? Or? No, I don't post at all. I don't even think I have an account. Neither do I. Yeah. I've never asked a question, never answered a question. Uh, thank God for the people that do. I know, but we're on there <laughs> every single day. Like Stack Definitely. Overflow helped me get my degree yeah. and helps me do my job. So I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be the person I am today without Stack, Stack Overflow. Overflow right? yeah. So it's a really yeah. good resource. Um, don't just like read the answers and copy and paste the code, but try to truly understand it, that's the best way you can learn. Yeah, a lot of the users might like actually walk you through it and mm -hmm. explain it too, and that's probably like, sh seriously, shout out to them, yeah. like for real. If you're watching this, we love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Advice for newbies, just like last words. Um, I mean, we've said this probably a lot in this video, but just to have some type of goal, have some type of goal in mind. No, don't just like jump in and then have no idea what you're doing and just go down a path and have no type of like passion for it like really try to figure out like what kind of path you want to go down because it's like it's a rabbit hole for mm -hmm. real when you go in there and my like closing words would be like the best way to learn how to code is to code like you really just have to put in the time um so that's that so you can find Bria and I on the internet in various places and I'll put it all below yes. and I'll also put a bunch of information about online resources and things like that. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions um, mm -hmm. or like ping us individually. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.